The production team of Alatra TV Irpen has attended an event dedicated to the presentation of a new book by Buddhist monk Junsei Tarasava, the head of Nipponzan Mihoji Buddhist Order in Ukraine, Russia, and Central Asia. Junsei Tarasava is known throughout the world for his anti war and peacekeeping activities. Tarasava Sensei kindly agreed to give an interview to our channel. Maybe we should start with a little bit about yourself. How did you decide to become a monk? Mm -hmm. And especially in further years, uh, why did you choose the path of uh, being a peacemaker, mm -hmm. like traveling all around the world in different conflict zones, mm -hmm. but bringing peace to mm -hmm. these, those places and those people? I was very fortunate that I was born in my native country, which is Japan. And I was born in a very small town in the seaside of the Sea of Japan. And the opposite side is a continent, which is like a Korean Peninsula. And the north side is uh, Rajostok. And there's a big lake, no, sea, which is Sea of Japan. And uh, my hometown is a seaside, very remote, far from the uh, modern city. And uh, especially my native land is very uh, traditional, preserving the very old custom and tradition. Life is very natural. Life is very simple and humble, far from any luxury. But since uh, I was aware, what is important is uh, uh, life is connected with natural seasons, four seasons, and uh, nature of sea and mountain and uh, fields and forests and uh, very spiritual culture. Every season have its own traditional festival, both uh, Buddhist festival and the Shinto shamanistic festival and also Christian festival. And uh, nobody taught any religious, specific religious things, but we grew up in the atmosphere that all religious custom and culture is like a natural breeze. We just breeze. So our little soul, since kids, we are observing the, all this mm, spiritual culture and nature and the seasons and people's life like uh, our food of spirit, food of soul. I knew uh, Christmas since little kids, and I knew this is a day of Jesus Christ, but I don't know who is Jesus Christ, but I know some special persons born. And once this baby come to this world, whole world change. So whenever in the morning I wake up in the Christmas, I felt I just come to the different world. But I never been church. I never learn anything religiously, like what is a Christian teaching, what is the life of Jesus. But uh, you, you see, when I work, this is a Christmas, special baby was born. Then that the whole world is new light that I felt. Same things for the Buddha. Same thing of many legends. In our village, in our hometown, the ancient gods, hero stories was kept generations of generations, which happened thousands of years ago. One legend came, one a hero came. They conquer the devils, they conquer the monsters. Then those heroes were enshrined in the mountain, a little shrine. It is a so shamanistic tradition of Japan. Every year, there is a special festival for this holy spirit gods of the shrine. All the village people come day and night. 
there are the special prayers and uh, uh, sumo wrestlings and dance and uh, dragon dance, lion dance, this kind of uh, legend which is so ancient, but it's kept alive. And it's all come to the kids. Kids is watching and hearing and uh, so thousand years old customs and message of whatever source, either from Japan or from India or from Christian world, it all come naturally. And we just take them like a baby grow by food. And our soul and my spirit and heart grow by all this legend and the stories, narrations of all world is coming. In this way, I grew up. And it is Japan, it is a countryside, but I was fascinated by the music. And especially the music from Europe, classic music, like uh, Bach, Mozart, Beethoven. And that great music is like uh, in my uh, child imagination, it's already super magical cosmic miracles with all this music world of piano sonata or uh, requiems or symphony, whatever. And uh, I still remember when uh, we uh, little kids going to the kindergarten and we have a, a day sleep. So all kids will sleep in a nap. Sleeping. Then there was a song, and this song, I, it was sometimes Schubert, like Ave Maria, or sometimes uh, uh, Toro, to, Toromelai of Schumann. Very quiet, sweet music, and the little kids are sleeping, but all the music is coming every day. And it's already like a huge food. It is a food, baby to grow, spirit. So, in this way, I grew up. Of course, everybody go to school, there's a class, and there's a class schools and lessons every day. There's a school system. And of course, all this school system is okay. We learn every useful things. But the more important things was taught before going to school by this festival season, nature, or music, we just directly come. How many, how many centuries different? How far Beethoven was born, Mozart born, from the, the, the distance and age doesn't matter. Heart and soul of great creative cosmic world is coming to the heart of the baby. And this isn't food. This is how I grew up. Then eventually I began to read books, many books from Chinese classic, Japanese classic, and European classic. Eventually I was so much like the Tolstoy, and I was so much like the uh, European liter literature uh, uh, classics. And then I began to read about Bibles and the life story of Jesus. I used to go to church. And I always go to the temple. I will go to the Shinto shrine and for the festival. And uh, listen to music, and reading the books, and read Bibles. In this, all these things are the richest, richest sort. Once I had a chance to read the Buddhist Sutra. Buddhist literature was one of the most difficult things to understand. It is very classic, very high philosophy. But uh, I was old enough already, 16 years old or 15 years old. I began to pick up the Buddhist Sutra from my high school library and the city library. There were such things. And uh, in somehow, I began to uh, know there are many important sutras. And I began to read the Prajna Paramita, Heart Sutra, Diamond Sutra. And it was so impressed. I used to read the uh, uh, books of philosophers like Nietzsche or uh, Schopenhauer, 
uh, from Germany. They only them reading it. Then I read the Buddhist Sutra, Diamond Sutra, and I was thrilled of the beauty and depth of the logical way of thinking up to highest mystic understanding of enlightenment. What is enlightenment? What is emptiness? What is a sunyata? This means a selflessness. No ego, no thought, total free emptiness. That up to there, the, the Buddha's teachings struck me. So there was a great source of rich wisdom in all Asia. This is how I begin to enter into the path of the Buddha. Then finally, in one night, I read the Lotus Sutra. This is what determined all my the rest of life. And I took the book and brought my to my home, and I began to read, and I couldn't stop all night. Each page is I am reading every uh, pages is a revelation and eye opening and all deep fundamental spiritual philosophical question I had. Too hard to get any answer, but all answered, hundred percent. And I read the Lotus Sutra in one night without any sleep. Then the early morning came, it was a very deep snow winter. And I woke up, not woke up, I just opened the window after reading the Lotus Sutra. The pure white snow is everywhere. And in the Japanese sea, huge wave sound and wind. And everywhere until all mountain and forest is pure white in the early morning. It is my rebirth. It is, I was reborn by reading Lotus Sutra overnight. Everything was answered. All doubts, all questions was gone. Such experience I had. Then, how shall I live? What to do after reading this sutra? How to use this? All what I got to this answer. Then, I no longer able to go to school. And I am all school teachers, all my parents and all friends say, go to high school, get good marks, then go to high schools, then high university, get good mark, then you get a good job. It's like a industry, factory. You are just moving into the automatic way. Like a escalator, automatic escalator. You go high and high and how, how much higher I'm going. How much after go, what to do? Just go to best company, best bank, best government, best minister. Then still higher, higher, how high? Millionaires? I, I have no interest of this after reading the Lotus. So I stopped going to school. Then I, I don't know how to live with this answer I got. So I left home, officially. I told my parents, I told my grandmother, I told my schoolmates, I told my teacher, I cannot go to school, I cannot go on just for automatic. Everybody say, you should go higher, you should go higher, you should be better and better. How far better? It, means, it seems to me there's no point to do this. So I left everybody goodbye. And I left my home. But I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. What to do tomorrow. No plan. I just get out and go. Then miraculously, I shortcut all the story. After 10 days, I was brought to Tokyo from very little countryside. In the Tokyo, I was brought to the very old, small Buddhist temple. But it was a Lotus Sutra temple. I already know a Lotus Sutra. And those uh, old monks in the temple is talking about his master, master, great master, 
but I am a quite arrogant, clever schoolboy. Who is master? Who can teach what? It is maybe the fake teacher. <laughs> Where is the true teacher? Where is it? I don't believe it. But uh, soon, this, this teacher coming back from America and coming to Tokyo, there is a ceremony. So I was, went to that temple waiting for this teacher. I, I want to check what is a great teacher means. All the teachers are fake, I thought. Finally, the day came and the teacher came, arrived from America and come out from the car. And I was a little bit far away, waiting for teacher with another temple people. Then I saw one old man come out. Then this man, once I saw, his man is shining. Huge light is coming out from his whole body. And I was just blind by this bright light is coming from the body of this old man. I never expect such thing to happen. Light is coming from the body. It is real. And too bright light come. So I just fall down on the ground and worship. It is in my life, first time worship any human beings by this light. This was a real direct experience. Then after a few days, I begin to know what this teacher is going to teach. And everything what this teacher speak is directly coming to my heart. Like a fresh pure water is coming to my dry mind was getting the pure water. Uh, th this is how I realize this is the person I must meet as a true teacher of the Lotus Sutra. So I have a Two experiences. One is read the Lotus Sutra by myself. You know, one night, whole world changed. Then, after I give up everything, in 10 days, I am sitting in front of the person who have a light. And everything he speaks is like a direct pure water. So this, this is the true teacher for myself. These two meetings. Then this is a person I must learn. This is a true teacher for my life. So you know, it's a miracle. Before 10 days ago, I don't know where I am going, how to live, what to do, but I have to go out. Then in 10 days, I am sitting in front of the one person who shine like a sun. And this is the only person in all human beings of this world I have to meet. Only this person. And in 10 days I came. What power it is? This is how the real meeting <coughs> takes place. I believe meeting with a person will change the whole history. For example, Jesus when he was young, was struggling. He, there was the one, Yohane, who baptized in the, in the wilderness with all people. Repent, then you will get to the kingdom of God. And this, this Jesus appeared. Then John said, only meet two persons. Then John said, I am baptizing by water. But you will baptize the whole people by true spirit. This John knows this. From here, whole new history of the world started by two persons. Another example is Tolstoy. He is already very famous in the literature. And he is a very true way seeker. I was child time, I was very much attached and moved by his writings, everything. And there was one Indian, young Indians, who are living, who studied in England, and he went to the South Africa, Johannesburg, 
and he was creating some kind of community there. And these young Indians wrote a letter to Tolstoy. And Tolstoy got to this letter. After he read this Indian's letter, he wrote in the diary, this young Indian man will change the world. And this is the future Mahatma Gandhi. Nobody knows who is Gandhi in South Africa, but Tolstoy know. Only one letter, he got it from this Indian man. It is, whole world changed, only by two meetings. For me also, you know, meeting my teacher uh, is everything. From here, all my story of 50 years until now is happening. If I don't meet him, what I could be, nobody knows. I cannot even imagine by myself. This is the importance. Creativity of the human beings is coming from the true soul, true spirit, not from knowledge. And knowledge cannot be learned by book, not by school. And for me, before meeting Lotus Sutra, before meeting my teacher, as I told, I, since baby, I took everything where I was born, like a baby grow by food. My, my soul and spirit grow from all nature and culture, traditions, not by knowledge. It's here, like air or water we take, we grow. Our spirit also grows, same way. And when time comes, if your destiny is such, then we will meet a special person. And by meeting it, you will get the key for all the secret of the wisdom. Thank you very much. This is a very interesting story and really inspiring. I believe that everyone deserves such a chance to become mm -hmm. indeed a person who can change the world. Mm -hmm. And we are living all in a very interesting time. Yes, it is. Now is an interesting time because the sign of danger and risk and the confusions are so great. It's like a tsunami, which may come and take away everything and destroy everything. Mm -hmm. How will we survive this tsunami? Exactly. Catastrophe is here. That's what I, I would like to, to ask you, that mm -hmm. indeed today, uh, we see the different things that you also mentioned today, like climate change, global warming. Mm -hmm. The impact is really great and mm -hmm. its progression is more mm -hmm. like uh, we had a conference on the 20th of December last year, mm -hmm. or just recently. Uh -huh. It was a worldwide conference mm -hmm. that also dedicated to various topics like that humanity faces today. Mm -hmm including the climate mm -hmm. and actually uh, they were also discussed the solutions like the ways out of this mm -hmm. and the thing is that we cannot do this alone i mean any country cannot face the cataclysms alone mm -hmm. and that we need to unite actually can you tell from the buddhist point of view uh, other mentions of the last times for example like in the bible in uh, quran uh, in different sacred texts there are mentions of the last days so that there are um, different cataclysms going on and so on and that these this is the actually uh, the time of the choice of people so whether we will unite and become more humane and uh, go out of this or the cataclysms will just erase the humanity as a whole so maybe from the buddhist point of view the yeah, last uh, words of the buddha mm -hmm. is uh, there's no light which guide you you should find light and you should be light itself. Each one. You will find light within, then you become light. And each one become light, naturally we can unite. And the light will shine. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> this is actually the answer to the next question I was going to ask. Because how people can unite? Indeed, this light inside, it is, this is... Uh, what is uh, outside of religion, outside of language, mm -hmm. so... No, uh, everything should come from inside. Right. Yeah. Light, you cannot look for light. If you find the light yourself, then you become a light. No other way. <laughs> Great, thanks a lot. Also, 
uh, what can every person do, like right now, in mm -hmm. today's conditions, mm -hmm. to uh, bring this light inside oneself and to become united with the whole family, like humanity? Mm -hmm. you know, John said, as I said in the story episode, repent, mm -hmm. then purify. Then, the kingdom of God is near. Today also same. First, repent, inner, our inner dirtiness, our inner, like a clothes which you wear, hundred years, hundred years, and never know how to wash, the how dirty it clothes is. Only way to clean the clothes is washing, is proper way, with proper water. Then again, clothes would be clean, same. Our consciousness uh, accumulating, accumulating, accumulated by knowledge, information, data, custom, ideology, thought. So it is culminating the darkness of generations of generations of generations. And if you don't know how to clean, how to wash, you, 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 you think you can clean it by making the white paint. Looks become white, but inside is all dirty. Dirtiness never go. Today's fake is all dirty clothes you don't never wash, but you just paint again. It looks new, but all dirty inside. How to clean is repent, purification. Then real paradise is here. So what we have to do is think ourselves, how, what we accumulated, how to give up this, how to make clean again, how to make pure again, purification. Each one have to go, each society have to go, each whole humanity together have to go this, cleaning again. You mentioned that the paradise is here, but yeah. what do you mean by that? <laughs> yes. Uh, the, in fact, yes, paradise is here. <laughs> but we don't see because uh, we are blind. All darkness we accumulated. It means we are all conditioned, conditioned, like a cross using and become dirty and dirty and dirty. Then once it was a white cross, it became a dirty black. <laughs> but originally it is white. Same, our world is pure, pure land and paradise, but to become a black. Mm. Once again, bring back to the purity. Then, paradise is here. Right, <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've, we've talked about the project, like previously, about the Creative Society, mm -hmm. which also promotes these ideas of peace, of Mm -hmm. purification of mm -hmm. people like the creative ideology mm -hmm. supports that there will should be no aggression no violence on the tv on mass media mm -hmm. but it should actually convey what you have mentioned like in the mm -hmm. beginning of your story the spiritual inheritance of mm -hmm. of the whole humanity yes. music yes. texts mm -hmm. this should be promoted mm -hmm. so do you support this idea and also why maybe it is not a matter to promote Baby grow not by promotion. Baby grow by naturally eating the necessary food and by itself it grow. Same way our heart and the spirit also, as I said, how I grew up in the countryside. I, uh, it never be promoted. It was there. I just observed. Take it. There were conditions for that, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do we create such conditions all around the world? Each one become creative. Then new generation will learn it. But why did you choose the peacekeeping mission as, as the model maybe for your life? No, I, I became active before I became a monk and as a student in Tokyo. It was 19, early 1970. It is a time of all student revolution in all over the university, all over the world. War is 
nothing but the tragedy and suffering. This is at least uh, from the, our own Japanese history, we have to learn disastrous mistake and disastrous atrocity and tragedy our own people and the neighboring country like Korea, Russia, China, it become a battlefield. And all Southeast Asia, including and Myanmar and Finland and Indonesia, everywhere, up to uh, India, big fighting war between Japan and British Empire and America. Which side is always, there is a side in the war, this party on the enemy side. There is always a party. But go beyond this division of enemy and enmity, how we will go beyond and find the collective humanity and overcome the war promoting ideology and idea is always a key point. And easy to say this, but in reality and real politics, it is the hardest way to reach. This is a difficulty of peacemaking. I, uh, this element I learned in the anti-war movement and Vietnam War movement of the student. And I was one of the students. But whatever student will do with big demonstration, fighting with riot police and uh, street fightings. But actually, it doesn't bring any peace to anybody. Something is missing, which needs the real spiritual training, spiritual vision, and uh, determination and dedication. Even peace movement, there was inner fighting and sectarianism. Whatever ideology they will promote, still people are the same people. And peace never be created. This is why I choose to be monk. And as a monk, we don't escape from the real war. In the middle of the war, we have to find the real true humanity from all sides. Not only find, bring out this humanity and go beyond this dividing line. And it is simply to say this, but impossible to really do it. But at least we are there to pray, to bring out this another dynamics. War is own logic of dynamics, which means a power of destruction, strategy, and uh, tactics, how to attack, how to maneuver, how to trick. This is a war dynamic. But they are all done by human beings. By how to bring the another dynamic and dimension of the human spirituality from all the participants of the war. This is the most important and difficult question. And as a monk, we try to bring the new dynamics and creation in the middle of the battlefield. But not battlefield he is only the part, bigger side, which is the leader of the government strategist and the dynamic of the powers of the whole world. So, you know, war have a deeper, 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 deeper roots. The same, how to clean all these roots. Otherwise, we will never, war will never end. Before changing the world, you yourself be the change. This is Gandhi's world. If you want to change to see the better world, you should be the change by yourself. You be the example. You must be the example. What would you like to wish to all people who would watch this all around the world because we are International Volunteer TV? Thank <laughs> you.